Welcome back to episode 7 of building our ultimate expedition vehicle. With the bathroom mostly done, it was time to switch gears and get some windows installed. Very exciting. Our windows just showed up. The day has finally come. Some there, some over there. I'm going to open them up. So our windows arrived today and we were very excited, but um, this one looks like it was mauled by a bear. And I'm gonna open it and I'm really hoping that there's not any damage to the window because this is our big window in the dinette area. Looks like we've got some damaged foam and just a little nick on the frame for the blind, but I think we're gonna be okay. What are you doing? <laughs> Wait, do these require butyl tape? They didn't say you use butyl tape. What did they say to do? They didn't. They have a gasket, I think. I don't know. Our window showed up with some vague instructions and uh, we're gonna see if we can't mess this up too bad. These windows did not come with a template for tracing the cutout. We need to cut out this dimension here, which is really difficult to trace. So instead I'm just gonna trace the inside and then make an offset line to get our final cut dimension. <laughs> when I close one eye, I can see the tape move. I also give you the cutout dimensions in millimeters. My eye does not work in millimeters. We're about to find out if the window fits in the hole we cut. Does it fit? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it fits. We got maybe a sixteenth of an inch up and down wiggle and almost nothing left and right, but it fits. Perfect. If you don't have a cordless vacuum, I highly recommend one. And that's not just because I'm a woman and I like cleaning. We, have, we only have one roll of tape, and it's not enough to do the other window. We're on tape rations! <laughs> so I am saving all the masking tape so we can hopefully reuse it on the other side and avoid a trip to the store. We're both questioning ourselves because these windows have a built-in gasket and the instructions don't say anything about butyl tape or any sort of sealant when you've installed them, but that feels really wrong. So, I guess we're just gonna follow the instructions and uh, yeah. All right, first window is in. The cool thing about doing two windows the same size up in the bed area is now we have this cutout that is perfectly sized that we can use to trace the other side. And then you open it, it has one click or two clicks. Then if you want to close it, you go up again and down. It actually has another mode that clicks in where it's actually open a little bit for ventilation or you go all the way. Then if you want to sleep, you go up for a blackout blind. Or if you want it open, you go down and you've got a screen. So pretty cool. All right. Here goes nothing. <laughs> That's not really what I meant. <laughs> you said punch it in. We will wait and install the rest of the windows after building the interior cabinetry. These are the underbody boxes that got fully welded and so now I'm going to use the angle grinder to smooth these welds out and then I'll use the orbital sander to scuff up the boxes to prep them for paint. I added this flange to the door opening on the underbody boxes to give something to press against the bolt seal and keep them watertight. It's night time, Courtney's favorite time to paint. <laughs> if you've watched our shipping container video, you know that. One of the most important prep steps is to clean the metal really well. So we're gonna give it a good wipe down with acetone and then mask off some of the spots that we don't want to get bed liner on. 
We've never raptor lined anything before, but we're gonna give it a shot today on the underbody boxes. So I've got this etching primer that I'm using first. Got everything taped off. Give it a shot. When painting or plasma cutting, it's important to have dry, clean air. So we use these motor guard filter housings on all of our air hoses and they just hold a roll of toilet paper. I'm gonna change this one out in preparation for spraying the Raptor liner. The instructions are to mix one cup of hardener into the bottle of product and spray it. So much prep and so much cleanup for only like five minutes of painting. I got a notification on my phone that it was gonna rain last night, so we ran out and put everything in the garage, but our underbody boxes are dry and we can reassemble them now. So we're installing stainless riv nuts into the bottom of our subframe to hold our underbody boxes in place. We have the rain gutter that's on the box, but then we want it to seal and also not rattle. So I'm putting this rubber seal on the inside of the door that will close against the gutter. So we weren't happy with the 300 pound full extension locking drawer slides we bought and we upgraded to these 500 pound drawer slides instead. It's gonna require a little bit of modification to get them to fit in our staircase, but it uh, should work a lot better for us. If you've enjoyed watching our videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along as we build our ultimate expedition vehicle.